Despite being 12 years old, the PlayStation 4 is still a console that's very much alive and healthy, thanks to AAA developers still making games for this beast, even in 2025. And due to the fact that after 5 years, the PS5 has hilariously somehow gotten even more expensive than at launch. But what about emulating it? For 12 years enough to get PS4 games running properly on PC? Can you play Bloodborne and other exclusive titles? Well, the story behind this 8th generation behemoth emulators is actually more interesting than you think. You see, Shad PS4 wasn't the first PS4 emulator to run commercial games. In fact, there were many more before it. Orbital was the first one to be able to display graphics on the PS4 safe mode, but it couldn't actually boot any games. Now this is where Spine comes into play. In June 2019, a person appropriately nicknamed Dev of Spine released a demo for a new closed source emulator called, well, Spine. And this emulator could actually run and play very basic games like We Are Doom and Sonic Mania. While this may not look really impressive compared to what we have now, this was a huge step forward back in the day and people were excited to see how rapidly Spine would improve in the future. The next build of Spine would be released shortly afterwards, only taking uh, 28 months. Yeah, as you can see, the development of Spine wasn't really fast paced, I mean one person was working on it and it definitely took much more than it was anticipated. This new build of Spine did bring some very exciting stuff with it, however, as for the first time ever, we were actually able to boot into a AAA title. Well, one game to be exact. And it was Persona 5 Royal, which was still a very big deal. And while I understand that the footage you're seeing right now is severely underwhelming, do keep in mind that this was considered fairly groundbreaking at the time. Unfortunately, the hype around Spine would not really last any longer, as this was the final major update to be released. The last ever build of the emulator was released on May 17, 2022, and given that we haven't heard of Devil Spine since then, and given the fact that the emulator was closed source, it's safe to say the Spine is very much dead. At this point, PlayStation 4 emulation stagnated, with no other project reaching further than running basic homebrew or extremely simple 2D games. However, this would all change on the 2nd of July 2024, when Shad PS4 version 0.1.0 was released. Developed by these talented individuals, Shad PS4 is the first PS4 emulator to actually be able to play bigger and more advanced titles. Now, to start off, you'll need, well, the emulator itself. While you can download the latest stable build of the emulator, which is 0.9.0 as of today, directly from the Shad PS4 website, uh, if you want to download the actual latest build, you're going to want to head over to the GitHub page for Shad PS4, and in the actions tab find the latest build and download the QT version of the emulator. You do need to register for a GitHub account in order to download builds, but it's free and takes a couple of minutes at most. After you've downloaded the .zip file, extract it anywhere you want and, well, now you can launch the emulator. If the emulator instantly crashes for you or just shows you the console window, you'll need to download the Visual C++ redistributables, which I'll also link in the description of this video. The user interface of the emulator is pretty straightforward. You can rebind your controller or keyboard, change the color of the UI and, well, launch games. But how do you acquire games for the emulator? Well, to dump games from a PS4 you'll need it to be jailbroken. The latest jailbreakable firmware version as of today is 12.02, so if you have this exact version or older, you're in luck. Now, since I don't want this video to be too long, I will link Modern Warfare's excellent guide on properly dumping your PS4 games. And now to address the elephant in the room, piracy. While I personally don't really have a problem with it, the developers of the emulator do. Probably because they don't want to get their project taken away by Sony. I mean, it's not really that unrealistic, after all we've seen what happened to Yuzu and Ryujinx. Not only that, but YouTube also considers piracy a pretty big no-no on the platform, which is why I'm afraid we'll have to go somewhere else if we plan to go in that direction. Ok, this was a pretty long introduction, but now we actually get to the interesting part, the games themselves. The first game that most people think about when mentioning this emulator is, well, Bloodborne. And I'm happy to report that for the most part, the game is playable. Many people have played and finished the game on Shad PS4 with a pretty positive experience. Now, in order to actually get a playable experience with the game, you will need to take some extra steps. Given that Bloodborne is a game with a huge community, a lot of community-made patches and mods have been created for it. Special thanks to Misek212 for creating an excellent Google document detailing all the necessary steps in order to get Bloodborne up and running on PC properly. I use the BB launcher as it's called as it also serves as a mod manager, which is really important for this game in particular. One mod that's basically mandatory is the Vertex Explosion Fix mod. If you don't know what Vertex Explosions are, it's basically when you have these giant textures pop up around characters and objects, and this happens pretty much all the time, making the game basically unplayable without this mod. I also had to use a mod that fixes crashing when hitting or getting hit by enemies. You may not need to use this mod depending on your CPU, but if you happen to have a 12th gen or newer Intel CPU, this mod will also be mandatory. 
Installing the mods is also pretty simple thanks to the BB launcher. You just download, extract and place them in the mods folder, mark them as active and you're done. You can now finally become a hunter on PC. But this is not all. You see, not only can we make Bloodborne run, we can make it look and play far better than a PlayStation 4 or even a PS5. With this combination of patches shown here, you can unlock the game's frame rate, making Bloodborne at 60 FPS a reality Sony will never give us for some odd reason. And you can also disable some obnoxious effects like the chromatic aberration or motion blur. But what if you happen to have a really powerful graphics card, and a 1440p, 4K or maybe even an ultra wide monitor? Well, by enabling your desired resolution patch and making sure DevKit mode is enabled in Shad PS4 settings, you can make Bloodborne look sharper than ever. It is very important to note however that upscaling the resolution heavily impacts performance. On my RTX 3060 Ti, switching from 1080p to 1440p cuts my frame rate in half, and I'm guessing the performance penalty is even bigger on weaker cards. Speaking of performance, what type of PC do you even need to play Bloodborne? Well, in order not to get constant crashing, you'll need at least 16 gigs of RAM and a GPU with at least 8 gigabytes of video memory. Nvidia 1600 series or AMD's 5000 series graphic cards are what I would consider my minimum to play Bloodborne at a stable frame rate. On my personal mid-range PC, I can run Bloodborne at 50 to 60 FPS at 1080p most of the time. I tested the game today, speed ranked to the opening sections of Yarnam, and it was really a smooth ride. Although there was one moment where the game throws for a couple of seconds before returning to normal. My first playthrough of Bloodborne was actually on the PS5 and I find it insane how much more responsive the game feels here at 60 FPS. It also loads significantly faster here, especially when compared to the old PS4 hard drive which would take ages to load the game after dying. If you've never played Bloodborne before and want to check it out, I can definitely say you'll have a good time emulating it. One dear game of mine that actually started working on the emulator quite recently is Drive Club. This game still looks insanely good for a 2013 title and despite it being a bit of a commercial failure and getting delisted in 2020, I think it's pretty fun and you can actually play it on PC now, well, somewhat. To run this game you will need to update it to version 1.28, as 1.0 just gets stuck on a black screen. You will also need the system modules which you'll have to dump from a PS4. There is a patch that circumvents this, but you'll be stuck playing without any text on the screen. Now, the footage you're seeing here is not mine. I promise I did manage to get the game to run, but for some reason when I went to record this gameplay for the video, it would just get stuck on a black screen looping this in the log and I could not get it to start at all. It would have probably worked had I just reinstalled everything, but I honestly didn't feel like doing it. Now, this game started running on the emulator fairly recently, so its compatibility and problems change and improve all the time. This is how the game looks and runs as of this video. You can unlock the game's frame rate with a patch, but reaching 60 FPS is extremely hard, even on top of the line hardware. While I cannot still consider this game playable, it's definitely making a ton of progress and I don't doubt that within a few weeks, Drive Club will be almost fully playable on Shad PS4. The next game I wanted to talk about is a game that a lot of people, myself included, wanted to see on PC for over 10 years now, and that is PT. If you don't already know, PT is a demo for a psychological horror game developed by none other than Hideo Kojima. Unfortunately, due to Konami being, well, a garbage company, this game was cancelled, and promptly delisted from the PSN store forever. As you can probably tell, getting this game emulated is a pretty big deal, and when you first boot the game up, the visuals look fairly accurate. Unfortunately, that doesn't really last any long, as the game kinda starts de-rendering objects the more you play, and by the time you've gotten to the second hallway loop, it's almost pitch dark, making it almost impossible to progress any further. While this is a really fun proof of concept, so far I cannot really call PT even close to being playable, but hopefully that will improve in the near future. The last game I want to talk about is actually not a PS4 exclusive. You see, back in 2021, From Software hosted a closed network test for Elden Ring, and that build of the game obviously hasn't been playable since then. But, thanks to the magic of Shed PS4, we can play it right now, on PC. This build has some interesting changes compared to the final game and, honestly, it's just fun to play and experience a really early build of Elden Ring. The game also runs at almost 60 FPS a lot of the times, and it doesn't even crash. However, it has this really annoying black checkerboard visual problem which honestly gives me a headache when trying to play for more than a couple of minutes. If you're a fan of the game, I think that this is something worth checking out, at least as a fun experiment. For the last part of the video, I want to talk about some big games that still do not work on the emulator. Infamous Second Son and First Light do boot, however they run really poorly and you need a safe file to even get in game. So I didn't really consider these games worth talking about. The Uncharted Nathan Drake collection can get to the menus, but won't progress any further than that. The Order 1886 unfortunately doesn't even get past the initial logos. 
Gran Turismo Sport can get to the main menu, but won't go any further than that. And well, Gran Turismo 7 just doesn't even boot at all. Now, as I mentioned previously, all of this information is only accurate as of the making of this video and can change very quickly. Therefore, if you want to know if a game is running, your best bet is checking their Discord server. Overall, Shad PS4 progress has been nothing short of outstanding, and I had a lot of fun testing and playing these games on the emulator. If you wish to support the developers, you can donate on the Ko Fi page, and if you wish to support me, you can like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.